So they figured that they would delude us by picking somebody who they thought would in fact represent us better with a football than with a degree in philosophy. They thought we were so slow, that we were so stupid, that we would elect the lowest caricature of a stereotypical broken black man. The biggest threat to the black community is these black pastors. This video is brought to you by The Officer Tatum Store. The Officer Tatum Store, get the merch link in the description section. Like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell so you get notifications anytime I go live and make a video. Make sure you still subscribe to this channel. Like this video, comment on this video, share this video. Let's get into this. Ladies and gentlemen, Jamal Bryant, bro, you the last. You, you, you are the last black man to be talking about another black man. This is the biggest problem in the black community is these low down, dirty, thugged out, uh, 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 pimp, prostitute, enthusiast, black preachers. They don't do nothing for black people. How you gonna be a man of God, Warnock and this, cr this crook? Why would you, how could you be a man of God and you espouse things that are anti-Christ? You literally are preaching to your church, telling them to vote for a man that support abortion, a man that support gay marriage. He was in a parade, an LGBTQ parade, parading around. But you're supposed to be a man of God. Okay, I'm going to get one more thing, and then we're going to play the video. Then Jamal Bryant. Do y'all know the history of Jamal Bryant? Go look him up. This fool cheated on his wife while he was the pastor with another woman at the church had got her pregnant. If I'm not mistaken, he did that more than one time. I remember the sermon that he did. And when that sucker look at this video, he going to know I'm not lying. He did a sermon called, I'm still the man. In his words, how he said is, I'm still the man. He did a sermon. I listened to his sermon. Said he's still the man after cheating on his wife and getting a baby, a, a girl pregnant out of wedlock. He, his church was, I mean, I don't know how black people show up to that church. We deserve better than these dirty pastors. Then what does he do? Who church did he take over? Bishop Eddie Long. Do you know who Bishop Eddie Long is? Go look him up. He's now passed away. Bishop Eddie Long got into a controversy because he was taking young boys, sending them new pictures, and diddling them. They came out against him in the final lawsuit. And, and I, I think a lot of it was because they got messy and they were mad because he picked some other little boys over them. So I think they were no better than him. But they were young. They were younger boys. That man probably in his 50s, 60s, he messing with the 18-year-old boys. Manipulating them, giving them money, trying to promise he'll send them to school. He's sending them pictures with his, with his shirt off. At least the picture I saw, he had like a muscle shirt on in his bathroom. That dude was dirty as a mother. And, and Jamal Bryant took over his church. But listen to what he had to say about Herschel Walker. And this is you and you'll understand after you hear this is why black people are so lost in America because they show up to worship God and they end up getting a false God like Jamal Bryant wrote a clip. When the Republican Party of Georgia moved Herschel Walker from Texas to Georgia so that he could run for Senate, it's because change was taking too fast in the post antebellum South. The state had been flipped blue. And there are some principalities that were not prepared for a black man and a Jewish man to go to Senate at the exact same time. So they figured that they would delude us by picking somebody who they thought would in fact represent us better. Look how racist this is. Than with a degree in philosophy. Pa pause it real quick. I want y'all to listen how racist this is about to get. Now imagine if Jamal Brown was a white man saying this about uh, 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 a black man. Just, just listen how racist this is. And, and let me say this. This is this is what happens to you black people. When you decide to have a mind of your own and you don't follow the status quo and line up the way they want you to line up, they disrespect you. You, know, you don't count as a black man no more. Roll the clip. 
They thought we were so slow, that we were so stupid, that we would elect the lowest caricature of a stereotypical broken black man as opposed to somebody who is educated and erudite and focused. Y'all ain't ready for me today. Since Herschel Walker was 16 years old, white men been telling him what to do telling him what school to go to, where to live, where to eat, where to buy a house, where to run, where to sit down, where to sleep, where to pay for abortions, where to buy a gun. And they, you think they not going to tell him how to vote? In 2022, we don't need a walker. We need a runner. We need somebody who going to run and tell the truth about January 6th. We need somebody who going to run and put for the cancellation of student loan debts. We need somebody who gonna run and make the former president respond to a subpoena. We don't need a walker. We need somebody who will be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Georgia, I need you to know the slave Negroes y'all are used to don't live here no more. We we can think for ourselves, function for ourselves, and vote for ourselves. Why? Because we don't need a walker. Now think about this for a minute. This is why black people are in trouble. Because you, you, you listen to his rhetoric. You listen to his preaching, his hooping and hollering. But not one time did he address the violence in the inner cities in America, in the black community. Not one time did he address fatherlessness. Not one time did he speak of anything that had anything to do with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Not one time when he mentioned the difference between the two candidates. Have you realized that? It ain't got nothing to do with God, have nothing to do with Jesus Christ, have nothing to do with the Bible, have everything to do with your feelings. And if you are a black man that is successful and you preach the, wrong, the different thing than what they preaching, they want to say the white man has been dragging you along. Jamal Bryan. Let me let me just say this: the black people who are most vindictive in their rhetoric against white people were the ones who have had the most assistance and support to make them successful as black folks. Let me explain this: and some black people gonna get mad at me, and I don't care. The probability of a person giving you or, or helping you become successful. The probability of that person being white is probably 90 percent more than a black man helping you. The success of black men in America primarily come from white men who have helped them, who have given them opportunities, who have invested in their vision and dreams. That's where the success come from. Name the black man that have helped majority of these black men become successful. Name them. Black people ain't doing that for each other. Go down the list. When, when your boy, when your boy Stupid McStupid taking a knee for the national anthem, who who did he run to? Nike. Gave him multi-million dollar deal. Michael Jordan, Nike. Multi-million dollar deal. LeBron James, Nike, $90 million contract out of high school. Where are black people? Where are the black people that are sponsoring these athletes? You ain't finna find your way up into success. The white man gonna give you an opportunity before a black man give you an opportunity. You wanna bet? Look at the teams. We got I don't know how many black billionaires. Not one of them bought a team. And when they do buy a team, not, not, not one of them are going to treat their players any better than the white man. It's called capitalism. They lie to you. They stroke your ego. And behind the scenes, they making money with white people. They getting loans from white people. White people come to their churches, come to their stuff, and donate hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars to their mission and dream. Who do you think is donating to Black Lives Matter? White people. You go look at it. Who do you think is, is supporting the NFL the most? Black or white? White people. Who do you think listen to rap music the most? And that's paying the most money into rap music? White people. Stop acting like black people are out here supporting each other and doing all this. In some cases, there is the case that they do it. But for the most part, black pastors like this are destroying the black community. He should be saying not one time will we vote for a person that support abortion. We should never vote for a person that support LGBTQ. That's against the Bible. We should never be vote for a person to create big government and we lose our individuality. 
We should never support candidates that don't want to be strong with the border because they don't care about the people coming over here getting raped and pillaged on their way. Drugs come into our, our communities. We should never support a candidate that won't stand up for the truth. He want to talk about Herschel Walker. Uh, uh, Warlock, Warnock, he, he got domestic violence with his wife. Used campaign funds, allegedly, to pay for his child support. And, you, and, and that's a good man for you. These dirty people, they are pawns. They are pawns in the Ponzi scheme. They are pawns. All they do is they're the mouthpiece of the white men, white liberal, who want them to say what they want them to say because they're the ones funding these people. It, it, it is, it is a, it, I wouldn't say a secret society, but it's a society of white liberals, white elite, that tell these Negroes to hate the other black man. You can vote for one black man without disparaging the other one. But a pastor, they're telling them, disparage the black man that step off of the plantation. This is exactly what this is exactly what Democrats have been all of this time. If the black man step off the plantation, you disparage him. You come out in your pulpit and you disparage that man. When Kanye West wanted to support Donald Trump, you disparage that man. Herschel Walker decided to run for governor of the state of Georgia. I mean, not governor, but he's run for the Senate seat in the state of Georgia. You disparage that man. You don't, you don't promote the other black man and say he's more qualified. You have to tear down the black man because people are vibing what Herschel Walker is saying. And not one person had a problem with Herschel Walker when he was running that football and he became one of the one of the stars of the NFL and NFL history. Black people loved him. Everybody loved Herschel Walker. But when you step off the plantation, you are no longer acceptable. Everybody loved, they, they, they love these black athletes and black actors and what until you step off the plantation and they coming for you. People love me. People I grew up with, went to school with, they love B. Tatum. And I say, why am I voting Repub Democrat and they ain't done nothing for black people? And, and, and I step off the plantation, Negro, you will get canceled. But too bad I'm not cancelable. Pull up then. That's, a, that's all I got to say. Pull up. Jamal Bryan is one of the fakest pastors in America. These people do not believe in God. They don't have a connection with God. They're, they're showmen. They're actors. They're acting the gospel. They're, they're preaching with charisma, and they're not telling you nothing. And black people sitting there in the audience nodding their head, living in the same squalor that they've been living in. Communities are decimated. People are getting killed every single day. Young black men, murdered, going to prison, selling dope, no opportunities, community losing value. Quit talking about the white man. They doing better than you. Everything is better than yours. Education is better than yours. Generational wealth is better than yours. But white people ain't turning each other down like black people do. The murder rate is better than yours. The communities are better than yours. Tell me I'm lying. Jamal Bryant don't live in a black community. You want to bet me? Jamal Bryant don't live in the hood. He live in an affluent area. When LeBron James and all these dudes go make money, where they move? With the white people. They're not moving with black folks. They're moving with white people. And then when you uh, take off, when you are uh, 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 Young Dolph, we go down the list. When you Nipsey Hussle, where you get killed at? Around other Negroes. That's where you get killed at. Not around the white people. So you keep running your mouth and making it about race. Do you really want to be honest about race? Kids, kids. Kids, the dumbest generation of kids. Prison the pipeline. It ain't because of the white man. It's because you dumb Negroes won't step up and say, tell the truth to these young boys. I was out somewhere recently. Boy, sagging their pants. Whole ass hanging out. And you want to tell me about the white man. You got boys with their butt hanging out. Sitting in the airport looking stupid. Nobody will give you a job like that. But the dummies like Jamal Bryan are blame the white man and not tell the truth to these young boys. You're killing us. Then you're mad at the black man for saying, I'm not going to be, why do I live in the hood? Why do I live around black people just turn you down? I ain't, never, I ain't never had no problem with white people, ever. Who gave me more opportunities, black people or white people? White people did. White man came to my office and said he wanted to give me $50,000. Head man gave me $50,000. Hey, show me a black man that has done something like that. One. 
I include my father because that's his responsibility. He's my father. External from that, maybe one black man, maybe one or two black men that I can name. White men donate hundreds of thousands of dollars to support black people. Hundreds of thousands. NAACP created by white people. You want to go down the list? Look at your favorite organization. Look at the biggest donors. White people. Black Lives Matter raised $90 million almost. Who's the majority of their donors? White people. Then they want to say, B. Taylor, man, you always on the white man. Sakaria Turner, who got murdered in Atlanta, she had $14,000 in her GoFundMe. Why these crooks got millions? My audience raised $300,000 for her. You know who the majority of my? White people. Okay. All right, I'm done ranting. I got to get on the radio. Y'all do the links. Y'all know what to do. I'm out.